Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Edit Place, and it's been a couple weeks. I'm switching things around a little bit. Um, for example, I'm trying to be more efficient, so I got my microphone kind of off to the side here that I can just swing around whenever I want to record, but it's still kind of awkward because when I face the camera, it's not as clear as when I face the computer. So still figuring out a couple kinks, but I just want to say thank you so much for everyone who has joined this far. We crossed over 200 subscribers. That's awesome. Yeah, it's been, even though this channel is new, my other channel and with commercial work and all the Corona virus stuff. Honestly, I haven't taken a couple week vacation since probably about a year and a half since honeymoon time. Um, and so, yeah, so I just needed a couple weeks at the start of all of this craziness that is the uh, COVID-19 crap going on. So I hope all of you are staying safe out there and healthy and staying home so we can all get through this together. So without any further ado, let's jump into today's video, which is going to be how to make your videos more appealing, how to spice them up a little bit without getting into gimmicky transitions and effects. We still want this to look professional and clean, but uh, yeah, much more interesting than just our standard, not only raw footage here, but this is essentially one of my clients that I film with every week, high-end hair product line called Pro Fashion. And this uh, specific video is all about the hair care line. And so this is what we got essentially for raw footage. A lot of people shoot videos like this at home. Of course, this is using an entire setup and a set and, you know, cinema cameras, or if you're into filming yourself, whether you're doing like makeup hair tutorials or talking about tech reviews or whatever it is, a lot of people shoot like this, where you just have a um, single camera view of yourself and you just go ham. And so this of course is one angle, but uh, we're gonna talk about how to spice it up here. Now the first one is actually over here, we have the fully edited video in a timeline. And you can see I got a couple layers going on here. Uh, the first thing is something that not everyone can do, so I want to get it out of the way. And this is a second camera angle. This helps tremendously for a number of reasons. One, it's just visually way more interesting when you can cut back and forth between different angles. So for example, I started like this. The camera B was actually on a slider. Hi guys, it's Ruby with Pro Fashion, and I'm so excited to talk to you guys today because we are going to be demonstrating the art with Pro Fashion. So that obviously is way more visually appealing than of course the raw footage, which, uh, or not just the raw footage, but the single camera view Hi looks guys, like this. Hi guys, with Pro Fashion, and I'm so excited to talk to you guys today because we are gonna be demonstrating the Argon Hair Serum with Pro Fashion. So of course in there we have uh, two camera angles. We have a B-roll shot of the product that she's talking about. And so if you have a second camera, I definitely recommend playing around with it. Most people have something like a main camera, your main DSLR, Blackmagic, whatever it may be, even if it's a phone that you'll have kind of aimed at you. But then if you have, I don't know, a secondary phone, a GoPro, someone else's phone that you can borrow, any sort of camera that you can have for a B-cam, even if you cut to it for just a couple seconds. And if you're filming yourself, this is where it's really good to be self-aware and know how entertaining you are on screen. For example, I am not that entertaining. I have had many, many comments over the years. I know it myself, I can be pretty monotone. Like even the energy that I'm trying to put out, all these hand motions is exhausting to my personality type. I'd much rather just sit here and be like, yeah, so we can talk about these transitions. They're super cool and blah, blah, blah. Never really making eye contact, not moving around. That's just me. So what I need to do in my videos is uh, make sure I have a lot of B-roll, visuals, graphics, text, uh, camera movements, all those things that are going to break the visual kind of line of sight that just stays stagnant when you just have a single camera angle. It's just you talking to the camera people will click away very quickly unless you are super attractive or super entertaining uh, or both of those and you pretty much have a viral uh, creator right there. 
So the first thing of course is having multiple camera angles. Next up, another extremely common one, obviously a borderline necessity here is B-roll. If I look up here in my uh, media pool, I can see of a bunch of different shots here. Um, and with B-roll, you gotta get creative. You gotta do different things. So here we have some just basic product shots, but then we also want to get a little bit of motion in there. The more motion you have in your shots, the better. Now you basically have two options when it comes to motion. You have motion with the camera. So the camera is actually moving on a slider, on a dolly, maybe doing a twist, pan, tilt, whatever. Or you can have a static camera like this. Camera's just on a tripod, but we have motion in the shot by her interacting with the product. It's in slow motion, looks all cool and interesting and kind of gross, but it's way more interesting than just having all shots kind of like this, where it's a product shot, it's on a tripod, uh, but it's not really doing a whole lot. So this one's got a little bit of a rack focus. Uh, great, but still, if I did this on every single product shot, and I've seen so many videos, I've been guilty of it in the past, uh, where every single B-roll shot, you just rack focus. Add different sorts of motion, uh, whether it's the product moving, you moving, or the camera moving. Now that's a nice little segue into uh, the next bit, which is going to be fake camera movement. So let's say you don't have any B-roll, you don't have a secondary camera, this is all you got. You got one angle, one long shot, uh, what can you do about it? Well, you can actually do some fake camera moves that are extremely easy. You can do these in any editing program that you use. And I'm just going to take a segment here. Let's just say this little section right here. I'm going to mute this so you guys don't have to deal with that. So I'm just going to take this little clip here and just add some motion to it. So what you can do essentially is you want to zoom in on a spot. And this is where shooting in higher resolution matters, but you can always just kind of zoom in. You obviously don't want to zoom in to the point where it looks pixelated and bad. This is why for my main camera, I always shoot in 6K. You may have a 4K camera, again, even if it's just your phone, but whatever you got, make it work. Here, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. And then the first camera movement we're going to do is essentially just a fake pan. So pan is when, if you look at my position tab up here in the top right, I'm going to grab the X axis and we can go left right here. This is how you would reposition. Now, if I were to just leave it right here, this is actually another thing you can do to break it up. This is the cliche YouTuber like jump cut uh, into like a zoom, like a 10 or 20% zoom. So if I press play here, kind of jumps in. YouTubers do this all the time. Again, when you just have one shot, you need to break it up every five to seven seconds. Uh, you'll see people do this all the time where if I make a couple more cuts here, usually if someone makes like a really funny joke or something, you can like do a super punch in. So now if I play this back, we have uh, normal, we have super punched in. Again, maybe she said something funny here, like she messed it up. Goes back to a medium. We can go back to regular here. Now it goes back and then you just repeat that throughout the video again, do a super punch in if someone makes a joke or something like that. But for now, let's get back to the fake camera movement. So we're zoomed in a little bit here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start all the way to the left or however far left I want to. And I'm going to hit this little uh, diamond button here. Uh, you'll see this again everywhere. This is a keyframe. A keyframe is essentially you're telling it uh, to start in this position. So I'm going to select a keyframe here and then you can go to any point in your clip where you want the next point to happen. I'm just going to go all the way uh, to the left of this section, way to the end. And then I'm simply going to drag the position to the right. You'll see the red keyframe here now has created a new keyframe and there's now a new arrow to the left. That allows me to travel back and forth to the different keyframes. This is very simple because it's literally two keyframes. Generally keyframing, you can do a million. But if I play back this little clip here, you'll see that it pans across. And so that is the equivalent of having the camera on a slider, moving it across. Now it's always ideal to do this for real, but what's cool is you can get extremely creative with this. One thing that I do a lot 
is combine this with a physical camera movement. So again, if my camera is, let me go back to this shot right here. So you can see here that I'm physically moving the camera on a slider from right to left. But now what I could do is combine it with a fake camera movement and get so much more depth to it. So what I'm going to do is start at the beginning here. I'm actually gonna remove the cross dissolve real quick. Now I'm gonna go up to my zoom here. I'm gonna start a new keyframe. I didn't adjust anything because I wanna start at the normal spot. And then I'm going to go, yeah, I'm gonna go to the end of the frame here. So starting at the beginning here, uh, I'm gonna go up to both my zoom and my position since I'm going to be adjusting both. Uh, the reason that I started the keyframe and this all is still on the default is because I don't, I wanted to start at the normal clip. And then I'm gonna to go to the end of the clip here and I'm going to zoom in, nothing too crazy. I'm going to adjust this a little bit. Now I'm gonna play this back. And this is mimicking the equivalent of both sliding the camera physically while zooming in because zooming in, unless you have a very, very expensive cine lens and a wireless uh, motor controlling the zoom, odds are you're not going to get a very smooth zoom. Um, and so combining, doing the move that you can physically with the camera and then combining it with a fake camera movement, um, you can get really beautiful results. This is so dynamic um, and just adds a lot of depth. And of course, if you're doing something like a music video or you just are that style of editor that has a little bit more pizzazz, you could even throw in a, a little bit of a Dutch angle thing going on here. So again, I'm going back to the beginning set my keyframe and go to the end of the clip. This is gonna look ridiculous. I'm gonna go here, but now obviously I've skewed those. So I need to readjust. And so now if I play it back here, you can see that it's actually going to a Dutch angle while zooming in, while physically panning. So with fake camera movements, you can do a ton of stuff play around with it. Again, it's very easy to go total cheese ball. You don't want to do this on every single clip or else it's just going to make people like nauseous. With editing, a lot of the time you want to essentially trick people's brains into thinking that they're constantly seeing new data and that it's worth being engaged into. So you can't keep repeating the same tricks over and over and over. Again, the jump cuts, zoom in and out. YouTubers do it all the time. But even with that, if the material you're talking about or whatever isn't interesting and you just try to keep hooking people in with more jump cuts and zoom in and zoom out, you're not gonna keep people engaged all that time. All right, my last tip here is going to be assets. Now, in this case, I'm gonna be showing graphics. I jumped into Final Cut here because uh, anything that I'm doing heavy graphics on, I actually do in Final Cut because motion VFX plugins are just so good and there's really nothing quite there for DaVinci that's super easy, fast. I'm not a designer, so while you could create this stuff in DaVinci, Premiere, anywhere like that, uh, I just like Final Cut for heavy graphics stuff. Um, so yeah, so jumped into this timeline here, and you can see that in addition to all the camera movements, the B-roll, stuff like that, I add in a lot of these graphics. Today is the thermal glove that comes with your wand. You're also going to... So I just add simple graphics like this text in the top left hand corner. And they're very subtle, but again, a lot of times these videos, if people aren't listening to a sound or it just gives you that extra bit of visual and uh, text on top of there just for extra clarity in what you're trying to do. Again, this is a instructional video, so this makes sense. But assets also can include, maybe you're downloading someone else's video or using a graphic. Make sure to always source and give credit where it's due. Don't be stealing assets from other people's videos. Assets also include different sound effects, sound design stuff, so you can do funny stuff. Um, I've done videos on it in the past, but I use Soundly. It's a fantastic uh, application that you guys should use for all sound design. You can add in graphics, logos. Again, the whole point of this video is to 
tell you that in order to create more engaging, more visually appealing videos, you want to break up the monotony essentially that is a static shot. If you watch a movie, for example, like a normal Hollywood movie, uh, if you actually pay attention to how long a shot lasts, yes, of course there are shots that last a long period of time, um, but something is usually always moving. If something is truly static, not moving at all, it's actually going to give you a very unsettling feeling. Horror movies do this very well and they do it on purpose. It's not to bore you. It's because a lot of things happen and then nothing happens and that creates a very uneasy feeling. But for the most part, things are always going to be moving, whether it's the camera or something inside of the shot. And that shot is always going to change. On average in a movie, I believe it's about one and a half to three seconds is the average shot, which sounds insane. But again, they have multiple cameras shooting on everything. So whether you have multiple cameras to shoot with, uh, you cover it up with B-roll, you make comedic effects with crazy zoom-ins, you add sound design, you add B-roll, you add assets, you add graphics and text, and now you have an engaging video. So hopefully you guys like this video, and if you did, don't forget to subscribe and let me know down in the comments below if you have other creative ways that you keep people engaged in your videos. Thanks for coming to hang out in the edit place, and I'll see you in the next video.